But what happens if we control for major depression? As you can see, both social phobia and major depression are independently associated with the likelihood of having nicotine dependence. Given that both social phobia and major depression are positively associated with the likelihood of being nicotine dependent, and our predictor or explanatory variables are both binary, we can interpret the odds ratio in the following way. Young adult daily smokers, the sample population, with social phobia are 2.3 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than young adult daily smokers without social phobia after controlling for major depression. Also, daily smokers with major depression are 3.7 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than daily smokers without depression after controlling for the presence of social phobia. Because the confidence intervals on our odds ratios overlap, we cannot say that major depression is more strongly associated with nicotine dependence than is social phobia. For the population of young adult daily smokers, we can say that those with social phobia are anywhere between 1.2 to 4.6 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than those without social phobia. And those with major depression are between 2.7 and 5.0 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than those without major depression. Both of these estimates are calculated after accounting for the alternate disorder. As with multiple regression, when using logistic regression, we can continue to add variables to our model in order to evaluate multiple predictors of our binary categorical response variable, presence or absence of nicotine-dependent symptoms. Another example of confounding occurs when a logistic regression model is run to test the association between panic disorder as the explanatory variable and nicotine dependence, the response variable. Panic disorder is an anxiety disorder characterized by recurring panic attacks. Here we see a significant association and note that young adult daily smokers with panic disorder in our sample are 2.1 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than young adult daily smokers without panic disorder. However, when we add major depression to the model, panic disorder is no longer significantly associated with nicotine dependence. Here we have an example of confounding. We would say that major depression confounds the relationship between panic disorder and nicotine dependence because the p-value for panic disorder is no longer significant when major depression is included in the model. Further, because panic disorder is no longer associated with nicotine dependence, we would not interpret the corresponding odds ratio, but would interpret the significant odds ratio between major depression and nicotine dependence. That is, young adult smokers with major depression are 3.6 times more likely to have nicotine dependence than young adult smokers without major depression after controlling for panic disorder. By now, you should be feeling a little more comfortable with the idea of generating a regression model when your outcome variable is binary. Remember to always code your outcome variable so a zero means no outcome and a one means that an outcome occurred. This is true whether your outcome is positive, such as graduating from college, or negative, such as developing nicotine dependence.